Hi, and welcome to Meeples on Meeples, episode 92. In this episode, we're going to be looking at Roll Through the Ages, a dice game that claims to also be a civilization building game. How's it play? Well, let's take a look and find out. Roll Through the Ages is a civilization building game using dice, kind of Yahtzee style. We'll talk about that in a minute. The first thing you're going to need is a score sheet. First, you'll put your name up there, and then the goal is to, to gain cities. Each city is basically another die to roll. So you start with three dice to roll, and you can see you have three. And if I spend three workers, I can get a fourth die, aka build another city. And then if I get another four workers and decide to spend them, I can build a fifth city. And you can get all the way up to seven dice to use per turn, aka seven cities. The next thing that you can be gaining on your turns are developments. You'll be getting money and goods that you can sell for money. And the developments are good because, one, they get you victory points. For instance, if I buy leadership for ten, I get two points over here, and I get a reroll one die after the last roll. If I go down to, say, agriculture, which costs 15, I get more victory points, and it gives me plus one food for every food die I keep per turn. So those are good because they're victory points, and they give you a special ability throughout the game. The last thing you're going to be buying is monuments. You're going to be using your people and workers to either build the cities, as mentioned before, or try to build the great monuments so you have the best, most beautiful civilization. The way that works is, there's three boxes here. I would need three workers to complete the step pyramid. The numbers below, the one means the first person to complete this in the game gets one point. The second person beyond gets zero points. You do not have to do it all in one turn. If I rolled two workers the first turn, I can cross off two boxes. The next time it comes around to me, if someone has not scored the step pyramid yet, I can use one of my workers to be the third box, cross it off, I'll get one point. Now, if you look at some of them, the other ones, for instance, let's jump to the Great Pyramid. The bigger the monument, the more points it's worth. It takes a lot of workers, and it's going to take a few turns to build that Great Pyramid. But if I'm the first player to do so, I'll get six, 12 points. Whereas anybody else who's working on it is only going to get 6. The third person will get 0. So only the first two people are going to score on these. And of course, there's the, the Great Wall, there's the Obelisk, the Temple, the typical kind of monuments that would fit this theme. Lastly, at the bottom here, you're going to see disasters. There are skulls on the dice, and when you have skulls, you have to keep them, and they will count against you. If you look over here, disasters. If you have one skull on your turn, it says none, no effect. Oh, whew, okay, no big deal. If you have two skulls on your turn, you suffer a drought, and you lose two points, meaning you cross off two boxes down here, and at the end of the game, every filled-in box down here is minus one point. If you have three skulls, that actually is kind of a benefit. Pestilence spreads to your opponents, and everybody else in the game, they get minus three points, so they'll have to subtract three down here. Um, invasion is four skulls. You lose four points. Revolt is five or more. So each turn, every skull you end up getting stuck with will be negative points at the end of the game. So you're getting points here and here. You're getting dice up here to, to use to get more goods and hopefully do better. And then, unfortunately, disasters are going to be your minus points. At the end of the game, you're going to add up your scores. Whoever has the highest score has the best civilization and will win. So, what does this look like in gameplay? Well, you'll start with a player board, which is a beautiful painted wooden board with holes drilled in it for pegs, and you have six pegs. The bottom green row represents food. The next row up, the dark brown, you can see a little wood that represents getting wood as, as goods. The gray is your stone. The red is your pottery, the blue would be tapestries, and the top uh, bronzish color is bronze. You can see the bronze spearheads up there. After all, it is roll through the ages, the Bronze Age. Anyway, you'll start with three food and three dice, because as I mentioned earlier, the dice are your cities, and they are so kind that they know on your turn you need one food per city to feed them before you suffer famine and bad things. <coughs> so they give you three food, one for each of your cities to begin with. The gameplay, well, it's basically glorified Yahtzee, or if you've played King of Tokyo, etc. You know, you roll the dice, you keep what you want, you roll again, keep what you want, and you get three rolls total. On your turn, if you get skulls, you have to keep them. I can roll again, I can choose one or both, I'll keep that one, I can roll again, there you go. Third roll, that's what I'm stuck with, unless of course I have a development that gives me a power letting me to re-roll further. Now, what are the faces of the dice? This one here, the skull, that's one of the disasters we mentioned before on the, the paper. But it also gives me two goods. You see a pot on either side of it, which is kind of nice. This face, I can choose do I want it to use it as two food or two people. This one is three food. This one's three people. This die here is coins. That's how you get money besides selling goods. And lastly, there's the one good side. 
So if this was my role, what I then do is I have to decide what I'm going to do with each of them. Collect goods first. Okay, well I have two goods. When you collect goods, you always start with the bottom moves over one, then the next one up moves one, then the next one up. I cannot just choose which one I move or how many spaces it moves. With two, dice, or two goods, for instance, I have to move wood one, stone one. If I had three goods, I'd have to move pottery one. That'd be my third one. So that's how the goods go. If you get six, then you get to come down and get a second wood. So there's my two goods collected. Next is collect food. Well, do I want to use this as food or workers? I'm going to use it as food. That'll take me up to five. And then I have three workers. That's when I bring in the sheet and I decide, do I want those three workers to go towards building that first city? Do I want them to go towards building the monuments? After that, I have to feed my cities. I have three dice right now. So one, two, three. Then I can track lost points. That's when we have like the resolving disasters, etc. For instance, since I have only one, there's no negative effect there. Um, now I can choose how I want to use those people, building the monuments, etc. Um, because you do feed the cities before you build another one. So if I chose to use these three people to get another die, I already fed my city, so I don't have to worry about feeding that one my first round, which is kind of nice. But now is when I can put them towards cities, developments, etc. Um, and then I have to discard any goods in excess of six. So if I have more than one, two, three, four, five, six, or maybe this one's all the way over, if I have more than six goods, because each slot over counts as one, I have to discard down to six. And I get to choose how I do that. For instance, you'll notice if I did have some Bronze Age from earlier, I probably don't want to get rid of these because one is worth five, two is 15, 30, 50, whereas the wood is worth very little, one, three, six, 10. So you get to choose how you move down until you have only six left. Now, the buying of developments, if you don't have coins, or even if you do and you don't have enough to, to buy a, a development, for instance, that costs, say, 60 or that costs 20 or 30 you can sell your goods. So I can use any coins added, plus this would be, I could sell my bronze, for instance, for 15 in this scenario. So that could bring it up to, you know, buying something that costs 15. The problem is you never get changed. So if I've saved up and I've not been discarding these and I have 30 and I want to buy something that's only 20, this goes all the way down to zero even if I don't spend it all. But that's basically how it goes. You roll, you choose how you want to use those dice, you choose what you want to buy, dice move on to the next player, it goes around until the end game is triggered. Let's talk likes and dislikes. Um, let's start with the components. The board is solid and really nice. It's painted on. It doesn't feel like it's going to chip or fall apart. The holes are drilled just the right size so that the pegs don't fit in too loosely. The pegs um, are painted to match the color of the item they represent so you know exactly what goes where. The dice are, are big and kind of chunky and it comes with seven of them. Um, they are slightly indented and engraved but not very far so the paint will see how well that wears in the long run. The score sheet is big and easy to read and it comes with a lot of them and every single one of them is double sided. So component wise uh, it's pretty solid. Now that leads me to a, a one question I do have. The, the price, it's for this small box it's just four boards you each get six pegs, the seven dice in this. It's $40. Um, we're getting near like big full box board games. And if you shop online and get good deals, you can get games for that price that have tons of miniatures and other things. So while I love the wood boards and why I think it's really cool and neat looking, I can't decide if it is a good price or not. Like I can't decide if that's a fair value or, or not. Maybe in the comments, let, let me know. I, I think it's great. I paid for it, I bought it and I enjoy it, but I'm not sure the price to what you're getting. Um, another thing I'd like to talk about in this section is the theme. I've been looking long and hard for a good civilization or city building game that really felt like you're doing that. And I don't know if I can say this does. Yes, you, you're getting various goods and you're, you're building the monuments and, and building cities, aka buying more dice and, and the developments. The wording is all there. The ideas are all there. But when you boil it down, it's just a, a very tried and true game mechanic, and that is Yahtzee. You know, it, it works well, the dice rolling, but it just doesn't really feel like you're doing anything. Maybe if you actually had the little wood piece and the little stone and the clay pots or something, I don't know quite what it's missing. The ideas are all solid, and it plays well. I enjoy it, but I still don't quite feel like it's a civilization-building game. 
It just it doesn't quite come through with these few components. Um, it plays really quickly, which is a, another like, going back to that. Um, and it's easy to set out. I know I often see people online post like, oh, I want something I can play outside or I can take to the pub while I have a drink. This is one of those games where if you spill it, just pick it up, wipe it off, you're good to go. It's not gonna mess anything up. And it's also one of the few games I might recommend, yeah, you could play this outside. You could take it camping with you. All you need is a very small flat surface and you're good to go. You know, you just rolling the dice of what you're doing and then you can write on this in your lap. You can play it out and enjoy the beautiful weather in the, on the patio or out on the porch or whatever. Um, so it's, it's, it's small and portable, which is nice, but it just feels like it's, it's trying to be something more grand than that. So I'm, I'm kind of mixed on, on this one. For everything that I love, it seems like there's something that just kind of takes away from it. You know, the corners are great, there aren't a lot there. It, it has a really cool theme, the theme doesn't really come through. But uh, I guess it is what it is. Next up is strategy. Um, there are various strategies you can go after because you can trigger the end of the game through you know building the the monuments you can trigger the end of the game by whoever you know gets uh the certain number of developments and that triggers the end the last round of the game um so there are various pathways to victory and i've tried them all and actually they're, they're all viable you can win by by getting the the developments now you're going to want to get some monuments but the developments it's a pretty solid strategy and being as each one of those developments not only does it give you victory points but it gives you a special ability, which is nice. Um, the monuments, on the other hand, tend to be worth more points, but you don't get any special ability or ability to roll extra dice or whatever. So uh, you have to kind of decide, you're going for the big monuments, the big points, or you're going for the developments. The nice thing about the developments is everybody who gets the development gets the same number of points. Whereas with the monuments, the first person to build one of the monuments gets the big score. For instance, the pyramid, the first person to complete the pyramid, 12 points. The second person, only six. Um, so a strategy for that would also be watch what other people are going for. If somebody's already halfway up to the building the pyramid, you know, checking the boxes off, now is probably not the time to start going for that because they're going to beat you and you're going to cut that score in half. Um, watch people's developments. If somebody's about to trigger the end of the game and you know, hey, I'm only going to I'm only gonna have two more chances here, two more rounds, I probably should do whatever can get me points now. Um, so if I'm nowhere near finishing the pyramid, I might need to just ditch it right now and go for something where I can score in the next two rounds because it's going to happen. And then, of course, don't underestimate the value of having extra dice. That's It's a dice game. The more dice, the better. So obviously build your cities the earlier, the, the sooner the better in the game. Um, those are just a few of the strategies, but it's, it's definitely a game that you can play and it, you have to kind of... Flow, go with the flow of the game and see what other people are doing, which is nice because overall it's a pretty solitary game. And so, you know, that's about the only interaction you have is watching what other people are going for and trying to beat them to the monuments. All right, now it's time for my final review. Our reviews go from one being a terrible game, five, it's okay, there's nothing broken about it, but I don't particularly love it either, and ten is amazing, must own. I'm torn. Uh, in case you couldn't tell from the likes and dislikes section, I love the components, but they don't fit the theme. I love the the price. I'm not sure if I'm getting a good deal or not at $40. I love the fact that it, it plays multiple people and it plays quickly, but there's no player interaction. It's kind of a solo game sitting around the table. I love the fact that it's portable and can be played anywhere. I don't know. Overall, I'm going to say I really do enjoy this game. I do not feel it is the best um, I don't know, civilization or kingdom building game out there thematically, which is what I really, really wanted when I bought it. But I can't say that I'm disappointed either. I'd say it's a solid seven. It's a very good game. It just falls a little shy of greatness.